If you didn't read the title of the video before clicking on it, you might not know it's in these boxes. These are flexible solar panels, and I never would have guessed when I received the package. It does say fragile on the front, but the first question I have about flexible solar panels is, are they durable? Ugh. These things did come pre-packaged together as a pair. But I would say they handled that toss pretty good. This is the one that it landed on. It actually cracked that box when it landed. I don't want to scratch up the surface yet. So I'm not going to toss this around. But before I do anything else, let me get all of this garbage pleased up so that I don't leave any trash behind. In today's video, I'm going to do a complete test and review of these bougie Bouge RV Yuma 200 solar panels. These panels are rated for a maximum power output of 200 watts and a maximum voltage of 25 volts. So these solar panels will be compatible with a 12 volt system. I do have two of them and the two panels that I have are different. This one has all of this tape on the back and the tape will be used to tape this to something like a teardrop trailer, a boat, someplace where you don't necessarily want to drill holes to mount this thing. The other panel that I have has little eyelets so they're both both rated for 200 watts, but the way they mount is just a little different. I didn't expect these panels to be so big. This thing is 86.2 inches long and 35.4 inches wide. So these panels are almost seven feet long and almost three feet wide. I do have a Bouge RV solar panel on my minivan camper and it's a little bit smaller than this and it fits on top of my minivan perfectly. So I got the first box open. I'm gonna go ahead and open this box too. Ooh. So this is the same panel, but this one is a little different because it has eyelets on the corners. I don't know how strong these eyelets would be if I was gonna mount this on something that's going fast, such as a car. They are very small eyelets. There appears to be four on each side, so eight eyelets total. But they look like they're perfect for sheet metal screws. So if you're gonna put this on something like a tin roof, you'd be able to drill this in. Sometimes the wind can get up to 70 miles an hour here during storm season, and I don't know how well these grommets will hold up to those extreme winds. I do want to give these solar panels a fair shake, so I'm going to try to avoid scratching up the surface at least until I'm done testing them. I'm glad that this panel came with saran wrap on these MC4 cables because I don't have this hooked up to anything right now, and it is in the sun, so these are hot leads. 200 watts, 25 volts. You could get a little shocker if you stuck these in your mouth, so I would recommend avoiding that for now. Now that I've got these two solar panels out of the box, let's go test them on a power station and see how much output we can actually get from them. These did come in two separate boxes, but I'm just gonna pack them up in a single box just to transport them back to where I'm gonna use them. Interesting, so as I've got these stacked up together, the surface area of both panels is identical. The border on the panel with the grommets is a little thicker than the border on the panel without the grommets. Good to see because that means that I can say that these two panels should put out the same exact wattage and voltage, which means I can put them in parallel together and I don't have to worry about there being any losses due to balancing of the panels. I don't want to try to crack this surface just yet, but I do feel like the flexibility does have a limit. I'm gonna have to tighten this up a little more. Before I actually test their output, I will clean that surface back off just to give them that fair shake. As I move back to my vehicle, I am gonna do a 360 degree check of my area just to make sure I didn't leave any trash behind. There is a lot of trash out here, and unfortunately, because I don't have a trailer with me, I'm not gonna be able to pull all of those tires out of here and bring them to the recycler. And do me a favor, if you have a bunch of tires like this, just take them to the recycler. There's no point in ditching them out in the woods for everybody else to deal with. These two panels in this box aren't very heavy. I'll look up the spec and I'll put it on the screen, but I'm fully able to handle this with one hand in my empty box with the other. So all it takes is one night here in the Midwest. Yesterday I was wearing a t-shirt. Today, last night it snowed. And this season the sun doesn't go directly overhead. And I'm on a little bit of a slope here, but let's see what we get with these two solar panels. There's my grommet panel and here's my tape panel. 
These panels are rated at 25 volts open circuit each. I have the Picron E2000 portable power station, which requires a minimum of 30 volts open circuit for its solar panel array. So for today's test, I'm gonna put these two panels in series and that should give me something around 50 volts. I'm gonna test the individual panels and see what I get and then put them together and see what I get as well. So right now I'm getting 30 volts open circuit on this panel. And while I'm doing this, I'm also confirming that the polarity on these cables is correct. I have received a panel on occasion that has incorrectly routed cables. And if you put those together, that could be a disaster. But right now, I'm getting 31.34 volts. My meter is on the panel, so it might change the voltage a little bit, but I'm happy with that. I'm gonna go ahead and put these two things together. Putting these in series, I'm just gonna hook the positive from one into the negative of the other. Now they're in series, I can now see what the combined voltage is. 61.6, so let's hook it into the power station and see how much power we get. Do I have enough cable to reach this power station? I don't really wanna set that power station in the mud, so let's give it a shot. As I'm plugging these solar panels in, I do currently have a 50% state of charge on this thing. This thing is rated to take up to almost a thousand watts. So these two panels together should give me up to about 400 watts. So I'm definitely not going to go over their rated capacity. All right, moment of truth. So I'm indicating I'm charging. I'm getting 190. It's growing. I don't know if you guys will be able to see this in the, in the video there. I'm hitting about 310. The wind is blowing and it has blown one of these panels over already. So they're also getting a little dirty. But 310 watts puts me at about 75% of the rated output for these solar panels. For me, that is a success because I do have the sun off to an extreme angle and these solar panels are a little dirty for me throwing them around. So I feel like if I had them in a place where they were staying clean and I could keep them close to properly angled to the sun, I would get even higher results out of these solar panels. Now we're hitting almost 360 watts and that's a pretty good amount of output so i would expect from a 200 watt panel something between 160 to 180 watts the 360 watts for the two panels combined gives me about 90 percent of that rated output typically i expect 80 to 90 percent in these solar panels so these panels are achieving what they say they will achieve which is a good result for this panel. So I wouldn't be surprised in the middle of summer if I was able to get even more power out of these two panels. The only two questions I have that I really haven't answered yet are, first, how strong are these grommets? And then second, how strong is this tape on the back of the solar panel? Because if you're gonna use this for something where you're going fast or you have those extreme wind conditions like we spoke about earlier, I wouldn't want this thing to blow away. What I'm gonna do now is test the strength of one of these rivets by hanging a weight from it and just seeing how long it takes to break. To test the grommet, I'm gonna tie this 550 cord to a key ring that I already have attached to the solar panel. Then I'm gonna hang various weights from this 550 cord to see how much weight this grommet can handle. I've secured the other end with a square knot, that way this won't slip as I hang the weight from it. The first way I'm gonna try it is a 15 pound weight. So let's see if the 15 pound weight rips out the grommet. Very minimal flexing, so I don't think that's a big enough weight. Now I'm gonna add a 10 pound weight to the mix and see if that rips. So that's 25 pounds, let's add 10 more pounds and see what happens. 35 pounds, nothing. Now I've got another 15 pounder. That grommet is just barely starting to flex under this weight. So I have 15, 30, 40, 50 pounds hanging from this thing. That solar panel is going nowhere. I did get up to 50 pounds before I decided that it was no longer safe to continue hanging weights from this in my living room. So there's eight of these grommets going around the panel. You could expect this thing to hold up to 400 pounds of pressure at a minimum. There is minimal signs of strain in this grommet. So I believe the grommet could have held much more weight than just the 50 pounds of I tested. So this solar panel so far seems flexible, durable. It handled the throw test. It handled the weight test. I'm sure it will stand up to be mounted on a roof of a vehicle, on the roof of a boat, something that is exposed to high winds and a lot of shearing forces. I don't have anything set up to test the tape in this video, but I do know that some folks out there have those mounted on their campers and they drive around with them all the time. So I think that the limiting factor for mounting those panels will be the surface that you're mounting to. Is the surface clean? Does it have paint on it? Paint the vehicle with one of these solar panels taped to it. 
the paint might just peel right off of the vehicle. So I'll go for a clean prepped surface when you're mounting those taped panels and you shouldn't have a problem. I did get about 180 watts per panel, which is really good for a 200 watt rated panel. In the literature, they claim they will get plus or minus 5%. So I wouldn't be surprised if I even got around 200 watts in a more ideal lighting condition. The taped panel came in at 7.05 pounds and the drilled panel came in at 6.39 pounds so there's about a half of a pound of difference in weight which is pretty much the weight of the tape on the taped solar panel you could possibly scratch them i didn't scratch them in my testing and i didn't exactly try to not scratch them so I'm satisfied with that result. So I would put them somewhere where you don't have a lot of friction or debris striking them. Check the link in the description for the current price. They are currently listed at $579 per panel, which for me is on the high side, but what you are paying for is that flexibility to put this on something like that teardrop trailer that has that rounded surface and you don't want a flat panel on the top of that. Thanks for watching and help me recharge the channel by subscribing and I'll see you in my next video.